do you struggle with meal prep or just eating in a healthy fashion in general? Do you throw your hands up in the air at the thought of choosing foods on a regular, consistent basis to keep you healthy? Well, if you answered yes to these uh, questions, you're going to want to listen to today's video because I am going to talk about general rules for healthy meal prep. Somebody asked me recently to post a video about, um, for you know, with a 24-hour meal plan for a diabetic. And I thought to myself, yes, I can uh, post such a video and I will will post such a video but you know everybody has different preferences in terms of what they like to eat some people are vegetarian some people have certain restrictions and so on and so I can post a meal plan yes for a diabetic but it might not really be relevant to everybody instead there are some general rules that I'm going to share with you so that depending on what your preferences are for you know different food choices you can use these general rules to prepare healthy meals every single time. Before we get into it, I'm Dr. Amina Gooden, a physician and a health coach, and I talk about all things uh, blood sugar balance and just healthy living and lifestyles in general so that you spend much less time in the hospital and you don't spend all your time thinking about the different medications that may be prescribed by a doctor. All right, let's get into it. Eight rules um, for healthy meal prep, eight rules to live by. The first one is essentially when you're preparing your meals, the first meal of the day especially should be a meal that gives you energy in a gentle fashion. So when I say gentle fashion, you don't want all the nutrients and energy from your food to just flush into your system all at once. That's a big jolt, a big shock to your system after an overnight fast. And so you want the energy and nutrients to be released nice and slowly. And for that to happen, it means that your food should not be just simple, refined starches or sugars, as is so commonly the case. Breakfast oftentimes is a cereal, um, breakfast cereal and juice and just generally sweet things that give you mostly energy and not too much in the way of nutrients. Instead, you want your meal to be a little more complex, a little more rich in terms of having more protein and you want it to have some fat as well. And then maybe if you want, there can be a little starch, but certainly you want it to be more in the favor of protein and fat and then fiber as well. All these things will slow down the release of energy in your system, energy you might get from starch and certainly from the other foods, the protein and the fat, but this is going to have a slower uh, breakdown in your digestive system and a slow release of energy in your system so you're not overwhelmed and jolted, <laughs> jolted all at once first thing in the morning or first thing when you break your fast. Um, second rule uh, for healthy meal prep is generally to plan a bigger breakfast. So breakfast, of course, doesn't have to be early in the morning. Many people are not hungry first thing in the morning. You might break your fast closer to midday. But whenever it is that you break your fast, you probably should plan to have um, a more like a full, a, more, a larger breakfast, I guess, so to speak, right? And if you are having a larger breakfast, a bigger, more hearty meal at breakfast time, you are less likely to want a snack two hours later. Um, a bigger meal, again, a slow release of the nutrients means that you're going to have this gradual release of energy, gradual increase, which will last you a longer time. You'll tend to be more satisfied, especially if you're going to have protein and fat with that. So a large breakfast to decrease the chance of you needing a slack, snack barely two hours later, maybe mid-morning, 10, 11 o'clock, okay? Third rule for healthy meal prep is essentially to have vegetables with your meals if you can have vegetables with at least two of your meals and if you can vary the vegetables as well so some people might say well i'm gonna have broccoli with all with my meals broccoli every time at dinner right but if you're having only one type of vegetable every single day week after week you're still going to be in an imbalance because you will get certain nutrients from broccoli but you're going to be lacking in nutrients from other vegetables the red vegetables the orange vegetables the purple vegetables etc and so your goal should be to incorporate a variety of vegetables and you can vary the types of vegetables you have by the season so in some seasons squash might be more um, abundant and then in another season maybe it's broccoli or carrots but essentially eat with the seasons and if you're eating with the seasons then you're likely to vary your veg you start vary the nutrient intake month by month season by season and generally year by year okay so have vegetables with at least two of the meals i talk about in past videos about my five four three two one plan which essentially 
essentially is, you know, for those of you who are starting to incorporate vegetables in your diet for the, for the first time, you're going to want to go to a supermarket and take five different vegetables, just any type of vegetable that you can stomach. And the easiest preparation for vegetables is lightly steaming them. So you can steam them for about four minutes. Okay. And then you're going to essentially have three different vegetables, at least out of the five vegetables with at least two of your meals and you can try that for the first one week and see how that goes i promise you you're going to feel better and then you can rep replicate or repeat that every week thereafter and make that a part of your normal um essentially normal uh, meal plan so to speak okay um, vegetables of course in addition to having a lot of fiber they give you a lot of nutrients and you have vitamins, minerals, and also phytonutrients, those nutrients that give the plants their color, but also they have major benefits for your overall health and also for the health of your good intestinal bacteria, good intestinal germs, okay? Fourth rule to live by for healthy meal prep is if you're going to have dessert, well, maybe you don't need to do like what they do in the hospital and have dessert with every meal in the hospitals. Basically do the opposite of what the hospital does. So in the hospital, they will serve you dessert with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You don't need to have breakfast with, sorry, uh, dessert with every meal. If you do choose to have dessert, maybe once a day, you can consider having that with lunch. You want to have the dessert in the daytime when you can have time during the rest of the day to walk it off, right? So essentially, instead of um, sleeping it off at night, or rather, should I say sleeping it on, you have dessert early in the day so you can walk it off. You'll still be a little active and your muscles and your body in general will be using some more energy as the day progresses. So you'll be able to burn off some of that extra energy from the dessert compared to if you had dessert in the evening when essentially you will have it and then maybe go to sleep and you will basically store it on all right so dessert if you're going to have dessert try to have dessert in with the lunch meal or in the middle of the day as opposed to with the evening meal fifth rule to live by in terms of meal planning is to eat at least two hours before bedtime so similar to the explanation for having the de dessert um in like around mid the middle of the day if you eat in the evening time just before bed, essentially you will go to sleep. You will not be burning off any of that energy from the food. Instead, you will be storing it on. You'll, you'll be sleeping it on instead of burning it off, right? So try to have a two hour gap between when you finish eating a meal and when you go to sleep so that it'll have time to digest. You might be doing a little something to burn off a little of it and you won't be going to sleep in that fat storage mode. Sixth rule to live by in terms of meal planning is in terms of your beverages, if possible, try to have mostly water and unsweetened beverages. Your energy, whatever energy and nutrients you get, try to let that be in the form of your food, which your body will have to work to extract the energy and nutrients from, as opposed to drink where there's not much work to do and all that sugar, because that's what's what sweet sweetened drinks are basically pure sugar almost and that just gets into your system very quickly it carries up your blood sugar and it basically just kind of over puts your uh, metabolism in overdrive okay so try instead of having sweetened beverages with your meals and throughout the day to replace those sweetened beverages by water um, unsweetened tea unsweetened coffee if you're going to have coffee okay Seventh rule to live by in terms of meal prep is essentially when you're having your meal meals, whether it's two, three main meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or two main meals, breakfast and dinner, whatever, try to make it so that your meals are bigger. So have most of your nutrients in those big main meals. When you have all your nutrients in your main meals, your protein, your fat, fiber, you know, and whatever starch you might choose to have with your, your meals, you're going to get the body's going to get all it needs and so you're not going to be feeling hungry and craving snacks and generally drunk junk food in between these main meals a lot of times cravings and the desire for snacking and so on in between meals is because your body did not get what it needed it didn't get all the nutrients so it's still sending you signals hunger signals because it wants you to go and get those ingredients those nutrients that it needs to support the proper functioning and if you're not getting that you're going to feel hungry and you're going to want to snack so try when you're eating to have all the nutrients that you need on, in those main meals so that you you end up eating just three times a day or two times a day depending on how big those meals are okay 
And the eighth and final rule to live by in terms of meal prep is basically to keep it basic. Eat unprocessed foods. And when I say unprocessed foods, I mean foods that mainly come from the land and the sea and less of those foods from the factory. So all your vegetables, you know, whatever root tubers, whole grains if you desire, meat, um, a dairy, eggs, um, from the sea, you have seafood in general, your seaweeds, just eat all those basic foundational foods. I talk about the beam food, food pyramid. And by the way, I have a book that's coming out that's really going to get into all these things and clarify all these things for people who really have difficulty trying to figure out how to eat in a healthy fashion. But the beam food pyramid, which I actually did a video on that before, essentially the first tier or the bottom of the pyramid is just those unprocessed foods that come naturally from the land and sea. We have tier two, which are transformed foods so foods you know cooking uh, peeling uh, blending to an extent fermentation and so on freezing those are uh, ways of transforming foods usually to make them easier to eat easier to digest um, also able to be stored okay but then the tier three foods those are the ones that you really want to avoid as much as you can those are the foods that are processed in the factory those are the foods where when you look at them you cannot tell what the base ingredients are you will have to go and read the ingredient list those are the foods that you want to minimize as much as possible and stick with those foods that are closest to the base of the pyramid the bean food pyramid okay so these these essentially are the eight rules to live by when it comes to healthy meal prep, especially for people who are diabetic. Let's run through them again quickly. You want to have your food, the energy from your food, really gently rather than all at once. So more, more bulky sort of unrefined foods. Okay. Two, you want to have a larger breakfast that is not sugary. Three, more vegetables, vegetables with at least two of three meals that you eat in a day. Four, if you're gonna have dessert, have it at lunchtime. Five, eat within two, sorry, eat at least two hours before bedtime. Six, drink water and unsweetened beverages. Seven, eat more food with your main meal so you don't have to worry about snacking in between the meals. And seven, uh, sorry, and eight, um, eat from the land and the sea, right? So unprocessed foods mainly and less of those foods from the factory. I hope you all found this video helpful and I'm going to do another video coming up, which basically on request of that viewer, a sample 24 hour diabetes meal plan. Stay tuned for that video and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching this one. Please share it with somebody else who you think might benefit from this. And for those of you who reached this far, look out for my new book coming out soon, which will demystify all things food and also really delve into um, blood sugar balance. All right. Thank you once again and I'll see you next time. Bye.